welcome to a new show, Serving the Valley. It's a chance for us to put the spotlight on service organizations and opportunities here in the Cedar Valley where, you know, they work together and collaborate to help make our community a better place for all. On this show, we are featuring the Greater Cedar Valley Alliance and Chamber in a specific program with Leader Valley and Leader and Me. Melissa Reed joins me here in our opening segment. We'll hear from some principals. We'll hear from some students that are leaders right now in the Leader in Me program. Thanks for joining me and just to off the start, what is Leader Valley and why are we blessed to have it here in the That's Cedar a Valley? Question. Well, Leader Valley is a talent development initiative of the Greater Cedar Valley Alliance and Chamber. We're really focused on preparing kids um, for the workforce down the road, but also for effectiveness in life. Mm -hmm. And so um, we hear from the business community quite often that the, the talent pool that they have to choose from uh, to fill these positions um, are not cutting it. And and it's usually the soft skills or essential 21st century skills mm -hmm. that are getting in the way of, of their successes as potential candidates. And so we have, through the Greater Cedar Valley Alliance and Chamber, really uh, worked intentionally to start to, to build up the skill set of the young people in our community mm -hmm. in hopes of developing the talent pool down the road. And this isn't something where you just snap your fingers and say, okay, everyone in this school is a leader. You mentioned building up. You're Correct. building it up not only within each school, but building up the number of schools that are in the Leader Valley Correct. as well. Um, since 2010, we have brought on 17 schools wow. um, in the Cedar Valley. So that's Waterloo, Cedar Falls, and the Catholic schools uh, here. In, and um, But we've also slowed down the process for bringing them on and really mm -hmm. employed a readiness model. Uh, to ensure that the schools that are committed to doing this work are doing this work for the right reason and they have the capacity and the desire to really make a paradigm shift that's needed to shift the school culture to one that mm -hmm. focuses on leadership. So Leader Valley is this. What is Leader and Me and how do they connect and work sure, together? that's a great question. So Leader Valley is an umbrella, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and our first major push or initiative is Leader and Me. Okay. Leader and Me is a school-wide initiative based on the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey. Um, but it's more than that. It's not just the seven habits. It's also, um, we focus very intentionally on helping kids to develop their talents mm -hmm. and gifts. First of all, identifying them, but then us yeah. as the adults in the building, helping nurture them. And then thirdly, giving them authentic learning and leadership opportunities where they can apply the seven habits and they can apply those gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. And in hopes that by by a combination of all those, they're developing the, the necessary soft skills that they need to be successful and effective down the road. Well, that's outstanding. And mm -hmm. especially when you look at all different ages and grade yeah. level, identify Identifying the skills early on is very important, and especially yeah. when you have a first grader who's learning all the way to second, third, yeah. fourth, all the way up. How beneficial is that, and have you seen results already, even though the program's relatively new, only at several years old? Yeah, we see, we've seen a lot of great results. We have a lot of anecdotal stories about things that kids are doing now that they feel like they're leaders, and they are leaders, mm -hmm. and it starts at very early ages. I mean, we have kids who are going home and saying to their parents, Mom, you weren't being very proactive there, you know, <laughs> when, or you two need to, you and your, you and dad need to think win-win. Sure. And so they're applying these concepts that they're learning um, to situations outside their home. So I think that's a huge mm -hmm. um, benefit and, and success. But also, we see that within the school culture, um, student engagement goes up, uh, parent engagement goes up, the discipline goes down, and then um, just just a general excitement for learning improves. Mm -hmm. Your teachers have higher satisfaction and, and enjoy being part of the school mm -hmm. culture. So there's a lot of great things that are evolving because we've engaged in this work and are shifting the paradigm. Well, um, of how we do business. And you hit the nail on the head. It's it's outstanding to have the schools doing it, but the parents, the community really needs to be involved to make this possible as well. And I'm okay. a member of the Greater Cedar Valley Alliance and Chamber, and we had a good morning Cedar Valley at Southdale, and, yep. and some of the students gave tours and spoke, and yep. it was just outstanding as a community member. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to go and see what is being done and, and to see how really blessed we are because 
I mean, it's pretty unique to have this in our community when you look across the United States. It's very unique, and in fact, there's 1,500 Leader in Me schools across the uh, across the world. Mm -hmm. um, but we are the only community that is the only community in the world that is committed to bringing it to all of our schools to every single student here in the Cedar wow. Valley. It's not just a few schools. It's not just a few students. It is literally our goal to bring this opportunity to everybody, and and that's because of the business partnership that that we are. Um, growing and um, mm -hmm. the the support of the community to do this work because they see firsthand um, the great results that we're having with kids. So a good start, but why do you think the future has such great potential for Leader Valley, Leader and Me here in the Cedar Valley? Well, right now, you know, we're, we're limited to K-8 schools. So we're hitting our elementary and middle school population, but we have yet to really reach our high school population. And when you think about the high schoolers, I mean, they're off on their next journey, either to college or to the workforce. And we have to, we have a real opportunity to help prepare them them even more so for that leg of the journey mm -hmm. and um, I, and I think it's our responsibility as a community to give that opportunity to all of those students so that's definitely an opportunity that we have but we're also making our mark regionally and um, nationally with with the work that we're doing in the Cedar Valley as I mentioned earlier we we're the only community that's trying to do this and so um, and we're doing it well and we're receiving accolades from um, Franklin Covey who sponsors the leader and me mm -hmm. and so it's pretty exciting um, they are actually also allowing us or have um, given us the opportunity to host a Leader in Me Symposium, um, which is a regional conference mm -hmm. in April of 2015. And it's a huge honor because that typically doesn't happen in communities our sizes, mm -hmm. our size. It's usually for larger communities, um, you know, Chicago, Minneapolis, sure. Dallas. And for us to have this opportunity in Cedar Falls and Waterloo is pretty amazing. And we're partnering with you and I to do that. It's a great program, but yeah. you also need some assistance. Two campaigns being launched here, uh, a communication one, let's talk about that, and then the capital campaign drive sure. as well. Yeah, we do. We're embarking on two campaigns uh, simultaneously here. Communications campaign is really, um, you know, the educators in their community know about Leader and Me, um, but what we really need to do is get the word out more to the businesses, to mm -hmm. the communities, and to the families, uh, especially in those, uh, the families that are not part of Leader and Me schools yet. And so um, we're really working on that awareness piece. And, but then of course, also to, to help enhance the perception of Leader and Me for those schools who have not yet mm -hmm. um, partake, partaken in this. So we've got the communications campaign and alongside that we have our capital campaign. Which is very important. Which is very important <laughs> because that's ultimately what's gonna help us um, fund and sustain this um, initiative for many years to come. Mm -hmm. And so we're just in the initial phases of that but uh, looking forward to this fall really getting that off the ground mm -hmm. and um, hoping to make some big impact financially uh, as in support for, for Leader Valley and Leader and Me. So if someone's watching this program, they wanna learn more information, what do you recommend as far as learning more about Leader Valley and Leader and Me? Yeah, there's a couple different things. Visiting our website, uh, www.leaderValley.org, and then certainly you can uh, contact me, Melissa Reed, at the uh, Greater Cedar Valley Alliance and Chamber. Great. Yep. And coming up in the next segment, we'll talk to a couple principals. After mm -hmm. that, we'll talk to some students. We've already talked about the Greater Cedar Valley Alliance and Chamber and business owners, and we've talked about parents. I mean, this is a whole group that's working collectively together to help yeah. out the next generation, to help out our children. And so far, just how everyone cohesively as a unit has been able to, to work yeah. together for Leader Valley has been good from your opinion? Oh, it's been outstanding. In fact, th this is one of the rare things in education where um, I really see the walls coming down mm -hmm. um, between the communities, between the the schools. You know, we, don't, we haven't always collaborated across school districts. And so this is one of those things that we're all in it together. These are all our kids in the Cedar Valley, and we better we better start acting like it. And so, um, yeah, the collaboration is great. We've got higher ed partners, business partners. Um, it's it's just really outstanding. When people hear about this, they, without a doubt, will not hesitate and say, yes, we will be involved. And so it's great. Well, outstanding. Thank you for yeah. joining us to share your story. Thank I you. encourage you to go to the website and find out some more information. And coming up next, we'll hear from a couple area principals to hear their perspective on Leader Valley and Leader and Me. Stay tuned for that here on Serving the Valley on Channel 15 Cedar Falls Community Television.
they said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back to Serving the Valley. Today we're putting the spotlight on Leader and Me and Leader Valley, an outstanding program for the educational students and our community here in the Cedar Valley. In this segment, I'm joined with a couple of principals here in the Cedar Valley. We have Mike Fisher and Andrea Christopher. Mike with Hoover Middle School in Waterloo and Andrea, who's now with Orchard Hill. Both as principals, thank you for joining us. And you know, we're going to hear from the students about what they enjoy about the program. We've heard from the director. Let's talk from, with both of you. Why is this such a great benefit to have here in the Cedar Valley? And why is it so special that, that it's a program that's here and it's going to be here for a while? Well, Leader in Me and the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People are really filling a gap in, in some of our kids' learning that they really need, and that's the soft skills, the employability skills, mm -hmm. the, the pieces like how to be able to speak in public, to have confidence when you walk into a job interview and shake somebody's hand, to really be leaders in, in, in everything they do, whether it's uh, leaders of, of service in the community, leaders within their, their jobs, or, or just leaders as individuals in anything that they do. And we found that kids were getting the academic piece, they were, they were getting mm -hmm. the, the nuts and bolts, but then we had to get to the heart of the matter, literally, and to teach kids the, the importance uh, of what it's like to have great interpersonal skills and to be organized and be effective. And the seven habits of highly effective people uh, were teaching that mm -hmm. uh, and really a partnership with our, our uh, businesses and people, especially with the Cedar Valley Alliance, has been amazing working with them and finding out what are the needs of our corporate uh, partners mm -hmm. and what are they looking for in terms of their, their future and the, your, your neighbors, your bosses, your, your employees, and ha ha having us help out and fill some of those gaps. Well, it just makes sense to me. You're training students to be successful, but if you have that link with the area businesses, that it's a smoother transition. That's really beneficial and you know looking back 5, 10, 20 years ago that link wasn't there. Why is that so important to have the businesses coming to the schools and the students interacting with community leaders? Well I just think it's important that we are a learning community that it's, mm -hmm. it's beyond the school walls and helping students realize you know what they do on a day-to-day -day basis from you know 845 to 345 you know carries out into the real world that those were students and that it's just important to have that um, that relationship mm -hmm. you know so th so the the business world knows what we're doing and we know what they're doing and I think it's going to help everybody in the long run and I know there's many examples that you've witnessed firsthand uh, just look at from a student's perspective what do they really get out of it and why is it something that the schools really promote we had really talked about how schools uh, unfortunately have become adult places that kids happen to attend. Mm -hmm. And Leader of Me and the Seven Habits have really turned our institution, so Hoover Middle School, you know, we're now kid-centered. And we always say, oh, we're kid-centered, we're kid-centered. <laughs> Are we really doing it? So when you walk in, who's the first person you talk to? How, you know, do you get to see kids? Mm -hmm. uh, do you get to see our students? Do you get to see our leaders? And at Hoover Middle School, you do. If you call and hear our messages at night, uh, the night messages for the answering machine, it's a student voice. If we send wow. out uh, phone messages, it's yeah. student voices. There's student artwork student um, work on the walls. There's pictures that students have taken uh, in our building. So even our environmental area, uh, you know, in terms of our building and the de decorations and the decor is all student selected and many times student created w within reason. Obviously we don't have kids running jackhammers, but you know, we, we have we have our students that were mm -hmm. very influential in helping us to design some of the new construction pieces and we got their input, you know, along with the experts of our engineers and architects, obviously, but mm -hmm. their voices will be 
heard in all pieces of it. We have many leadership opportunities at Hoover, school, at Hoover Middle School, whether it be uh, office leaders that, that help out with the office duties, whether it be in the lunchroom. We, our students run the lunchroom. They, they are in charge. They make decisions. Uh, whether it's sweeping the hallways, whether it's uh, going out in the community and speaking. We have, uh, uh, we'll speak to student leaders, uh, go mm -hmm. out in our community monthly, sometimes weekly, and speaking to uh, everywhere from John Deere to CUNA Insurance to uh, uh, the Rotary and the Elks. I mm -hmm. mean, our students are very, very visible because they're there. They want to do this. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to give them every opportunity to build those soft skills and build those employability skills to make them much more marketable. Because the myth is, is that there are a lack of jobs. There mm -hmm. are a lack of jobs. No, there are a lack of qualified applicants. Mm -hmm. There are a lack of people that have the skills to be successful. And we're going to make sure we fill those skills because we know at the end of the day we have two choices to make. Students will become taxpayers or tax burdens. Mm -hmm. And so we want our students to be ha ha happy, healthy citizens that are contributing to society rather than, than having uh, unprepared individuals that may be served through social services or, or the criminal justice system. Sure. There really are lives at stake in the work that we do in public education every day. Outstanding. The, again, talking about the Leader in Me and the Leader Valley uh, program that's been started here, and it's unique to have here in, in the Cedar Valley. Not every community in the state of Iowa is doing this and really preparing the leaders for tomorrow, as you mentioned, those opportunities. Any examples of a student who really has emerged over the course of a semester or a full year and, and really blossomed into a leader because of this program that is here? Well, I think you're going to hear from some today that you know I brought with me but I would just say that when you give a kid an opportunity to take mm -hmm. over they do and they go way above your expectations um, Maya Brinker who you'll hear from later recently when I was in the lunchroom one day came up to me and she said I, I need to show you something I'd like to make an appointment with you okay and I was like <laughs> okay and I, I said, well, just why don't you come in? But nope, I'm not quite ready yet. So her and a friend came in and they had a PowerPoint presentation ready for me. They had a project already worked up on doing buddy benches. And it just kind of showed me, like when you give the child an opportunity, you know, they want to lead, they want to make a difference. And I just have seen more than just child after child when you allow them to do their gifts take over and shine and um, it's just great to be around. And it's all grade levels, right? Oh yeah. It, yep, absolutely. You know, it, some people say, well, is this an elementary thing? Well, we're doing it at the middle school level. We're looking at getting it at the high school level. It, it should be at all levels. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you look at the wonderful community service uh, in Appleton Parkersburg after the tornado went through and how busloads of, of football players from across the state were coming in because they, they knew of Ed Thomas's mm -hmm. fantastic program and, and were helping with the storm damage. Obviously, this could be a high school piece as well, and we're mm -hmm. working to get that in there. It's all about service learning, you know, lessen the suffering of others, serve others. That That's what we're all about. Uh, a great story that I have, you know, because we always think of, oh, well, it's for kids that are already achieving at high levels, and, and these are kids that were going to be successful anyway. Yes, we serve those kids as well, but mm -hmm. here's a great example of a student who was tardy to class every day. Every day he was tardy to <laughs> about every class, and especially seventh hour, right after lunch, he was struggling. And, you know, we could use detention and suspension of those things, those negative things. And, you know, what the teacher did put him in charge of taking attendance every day. <laughs> that and would work. Was, and that was his job, mm -hmm. his job, quote unquote job, and he was never tardy again. In fact, one day he was tardy, I guess, I'll take that back, and we had to threaten to fire him. From he said, his you're job. you're gonna be terminated from your job. And he had tears in his eyes, he goes, I won't let this happen again. Yeah. And here, here's the thing, what would I rather do? have to threaten to fire a kid in a middle school on a job like taking attendance or find out that he had to be terminated from his job uh, you know as a 25 year old because nobody ever taught him the value of showing up on time so these are the skills that we teach every day at Hoover. That's great again talking leader in me and leader in the valley a couple of uh, principals joining us here in this segment now leadership has been involved in the school system for many years but maybe why is it this program even more specified and able to provide more opportunities than like 10 years ago with leadership opportunities for students? Um, to me it just feels different. I mean I've been a school counselor for a long time. Mm -hmm. There's been character ed programs for many, many, many years, but this is not necessarily a program of what we do to kids. To me it's a way of life, it's a way of thinking. Mm -hmm. that we, It starts with when they come in and they train our staff. It starts with us. Yeah. It's how we are gonna change our lives to model leadership and 
not all the time do teachers think about themselves being leaders because it's kind of changing that paradigm of what a leader is. You know, that we can all lead in different ways. And so I think it's, it's very different than ever before kids and that environment saying, we all have our gifts, we're all gonna mm -hmm. lead in different ways. I don't know. That's what I was saying. And, and why would you say other schools that maybe are not taking advantage of Leader and Me should, should follow the lead and be actively involved? It's a big piece of just uh, communication and knowledge and filling that gap. Uh, you know, there's a lot of acronyms and lingo and, and different programs that are out there. But what we keep saying, this isn't a program. This is mm -hmm. just a way of being, a way of living. And because we know that education in America after World War II was really based upon Henry Ford's assembly line concept mm -hmm. that we think of it as almost like widgets. These aren't widgets. These are children. Sure. And so even 10 years ago to where we are now, as we are focused on individualized attention, and even though I have 800 kids, it is about every single child. Mm -hmm. And that leader of me really focuses on the individual talent talents and strengths of each child and making sure, like we said, they go forth and they are leaders of service and will contribute to society long, long after they leave Hoover. Well, a special thank you to both of you for what you are doing in the school system, making the leaders of tomorrow with this program, with your staff, your teachers. It's, it's an outstanding service and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We'll be back with a look to hear from some of the students who are loving to be the next leader in me. Back with more right after this here on Serving the Valley. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. All right, you ready for some baseball trivia? Let's do it. What year produced the most no-hit games in the big leagues? Seven no-hitters in 1990. Wow, that's right. Now a question that's not trivial. How many children will witness bullying this year? Huh. The answer, three out of four. 75 percent? That's wow. right. How many of them will say something? Kids want to help, but don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. Welcome back to our final segment on Serving the Valley. Today, we're putting the focus on Leader and Me and Leader Valley. It's a program that's been around for a little while here in the Cedar Valley, and the schools are actively involved. We've heard from the director, we've heard from the principals. Now it's time to hear, hear firsthand from the students who have been involved in this program here, Leader and Me. And let's introduce each of you here. What's your name? What's your grade that you're going into? And what school do you attend? My name is Maya Brinker. I'm going into fifth grade and I go to Southdale Elementary. Wonderful. Thank you very much. My name is Maya Hardman. I'm, go I'm at Southdale and I'm going into third grade. Thank you. My name is Imana Dizdic. I'm going into eighth grade at Hoover Middle School. Great. Well, it's good to hear that you've been involved in this program for a little while. And Imana, I guess we'll start with you. What do you like about Leader and Me and why do you feel like it's helped you become a better leader? Well, I like Leader Me because it shows how whatever you do, you can be a leader. Even like simple things like lending someone your science book, maybe they forgot theirs at home, or helping them with a math question, still makes you feel like you've done something good with the program. It's very helpful. And how neat is it that not only you are a leader, but your classmates and people that are a grade above you or a grade below you are doing these things not just one day out of the year, not just in a month, but all year long. Yeah. Why is that uh, special to work together to learn leadership? Well, because even when you're a leader, you still have to work together to achieve your goals. Because mm -hmm. sometimes your goals that you want to achieve, you might need some help doing them. So maybe that person that you lent your science book to, they're a leader too. You know, they lead in something else. So mm -hmm. everyone's a leader, and that's really special. That's very good. How, how are, have you been a leader? Can you think of any examples, either helping in the classroom or out at playground or, or, or other parts? Well, I've helped with a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. I've, I've kind of lended a lot to my friends. And Great. yeah, I feel like, I, I feel like that's kind of special. Sure. Because you f you feel that little 
that I'm a leader inside. Mm -hmm. So with leader and me, you're learning that you have that ability inside and then you're actually being able to go out and do things to show your leadership skills. Now we've talked and there's what seven habits of leadership and you learned this how long ago? First grade. So you, when you were in first grade and now you're entering what grade? Fifth. Fifth grade. So you've had about four years to learn this. What are the seven habits, uh, one through seven? The first one is be proactive. The second one is put or begin with the end in mind. The third one is put first things first. The fourth one is think when win. The fifth one is seek first to understand, then to be understood. Right. The sixth one is synergize. And the seventh one is sharpen the saw. Wow, very good. And they're all very good habits. Do you have a favorite one out of the seven? Um, probably be proactive. Why is because that? Because it's something my best friend and I had to do a lot of when we were doing a project buddy benches. Mm -hmm. So like we put benches on the playground, or we're going to, and the lonely or bullied kids will sit on the benches and other kids can go up to the benches. And if it's like the kid that's like picked on or mm -hmm. doesn't like get along with other people or is shy, at least the teacher knows it's a problem so that they can help them make friends. And so you had to be proactive thinking of the idea and then actually going to figure out, okay, how can we make it possible? That is really being a leader in your school and in your community. Good job. Is there one of those seven habits that, that you like the best? It's hard to narrow it down because they're all good. Mm -hmm. um, I like together is better, I like that. And why is that? Because you can make a lot of new friends and you can make more than you already have. Mm -hmm. And and then it, if, if you're not already friends with other people, then they'll think you as a leader too. Sure, that's very good. And, and can you think of examples how you use these leadership skills we're, we're talking a lot at school, but also at home or when you are out of the community, away from the actual school building. Yeah, well, it's kind of something that you get used to. Like, if you change part of your daily schedule, you get used to it after a while and you don't even realize that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you spend a lot of time at school, so you get used to using the seven habits so that when you get home, it's just second nature. Wonderful. It, it, can you tell someone, because we might have students who are watching this that might be at a school out of town that don't have Leader in Me, why do you feel like it's a program that makes your school better? You know, people are nicer, training leaders for tomorrow. Why is it something that you're really glad your school has? Well, because, like Maya said, um, everyone has a leader in themselves, but the Leader in Me program really helps you discover it. So mm -hmm. it's really wonderful. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being the leaders that you are. And keep up the good work because there's seven habits there. And even though I'm a little bit older than you, I need to keep working to be a good leader as well. So keep up the good work and make sure that you have a wonderful school year. All right. All right. Thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for tuning in to this program, Serving the Valley, with a special emphasis on the Cedar Valley Alliance and Chambers Leader and Me and Leader Valley. For more information, you can log on to their website, learn more, and I encourage you to go into the schools and, and talk to teachers, principals, or firsthand with the students and see just how valuable this program is for our community right here in the Cedar Valley. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time on Serving the Valley. We drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. <laughs>